more widow skill, and shy band. Senior Citizens Club, Young Ladies Provost. accepted gladly and discharged fully their responsibilities during World War II, Korea, Malaya, 
Borneo, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and in peacekeeping and peacemaking operations or other conflicts. On this day, we remember the sacrifice of such men for an ideal, for a way of life. Let us take strength in the knowledge and hope that our sons and daughters will never forget the example set by their forefathers. In our everyday life, let us endeavour to carry on those traditions established in past wars and conflicts at such tragic cost. We think of every man, woman and child who, in those crucial years, died so that the lights of freedom and humanity might continue to shine. We mention too the obligation of showing gratitude for the peace we enjoy and the responsibility of ensuring that the freedom and liberty so costly won is not lost by our own indifference. So let us mourn with pride, but let us also remember with equal pride those who still live. See that ye hold fast the heritage we leave you. Yea, and teach your children that never in the coming centuries may their hearts fail or their hands grow weak. Thank you. I now ask Harris Gleason, Peter Cullen, O'Connor, to say that the backing of Young Child Band to lead us in the singing of the recessional.
the blessings of the fine wisdom and grace that under her this nation may be wisely directed to take its rightful place in the wider life of the world. Now I ask Ada Gillard, Hennessy Catholic College, to lead us in prayer for the nation. Almighty God, watch over all of those serving in the armed forces and those who still suffer disabilities through sickness or injuries, suffering war and all conflicts. Strengthen and encourage those who have been saddened by the loss of loved ones, especially children deprived of the father's care and protection. Grant that the same courage and resolution, the same comradeship and service shown in the last great struggle in which our country was involved, may now be offered in the great task of making a true and lasting Peter, the young child there, will now be this in me, it can't be mine.
take over our homes and businesses and force us and flee for our lives only to become visible refugees, unwanted, living like animals instead of human beings. Such is the case of so many countries today. Australians have been called on many times to leave their own country and fight on foreign lands. Australian forces, men and women, have accepted this responsibility in the defence of freedom and dearly held ideals. They have fought in many parts of the world. And since first dispatching troops to the Sudan in 1885, Australian men and women have seen active service in the Boer War, World Wars I and II. They fought aggression in Korea, terrorism in Malaya, confrontation in Malaysia, and a difficult and awkward conflict in Vietnam. In all of these wars, Australians have served with distinction and we can be justifiably proud of our representatives. Very early on the 25th of April 1915, 97 years ago, the Anzacs were getting ready to go into battle. Sailing from Egypt, they headed for Constantinople. Unfortunately, they landed at the wrong place and were met with heavy fire as they tried to advance. At the end of that first day, 2,000 Anzacs lay dead. But against all odds, the rest of them held their ground. The fighting continued, and at the end of the first week, more than 6,500 Anzacs had been killed or wounded. Born out of this terrible hell was a comradeship which seemed to have been passed down to sons, nephews, joined together to meet their mates and tell stories about each other and those to whom they served. How many times have they told those stories? Same story doesn't matter. What matters is that they are together to live a part of their life that is hidden from wives and other loved ones. This kind of comradeship is hard to understand, and yet it has held strong for many years. There is a care and a sense of community among these men because they share each other's suffering. Words are inadequate to express our inmost feelings about ancestors. Therefore, we have instituted the ritual, not to glorify war and killing, as some would have us believe, but to express feelings of nationhood, of honour for the bravery of ordinary Australians. Through the observance of this ritual, we struggle to comprehend and express our feelings about the worth of human life and freedom. Ritual and tradition give us a sense of a deeper meaning, more profound than words can express. Ritual is an attempt to say something which we cannot otherwise adequately convey. As we reflect today, over two world wars and the other conflicts in which Australian forces have been involved, we are reminded that issues are so complex that even now we still not fully understand. But what comes out is the fact that we as a nation believe in an ideal that was worth fighting for, sacrificing, and even dying to preserve. As a young nation, we have never been afraid to pay our part of the cost of freedom, even though it has been paid in the blood of the finest men. This we understand.
Irish will grow not old, as women are left for old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years to them. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Oh, 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 oh,
Uh, Please line up for coffee. Do you want a coffee? No? Okay, you have one there. Do you want a coffee? Oops. I did it again, baby. Yeah! What led you through the hopelessly tangled underbrush of private security organizations to our door, hmm? Stellar word of mouth, our fine client roster, those flyers we put up in that public urinal?